Well, praise God, everybody, and welcome to today's broadcast. I'm Apostle Craig Banks, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Listen, we're going to be sharing a message, actually a series, that we're doing at Canaan Christian Center, and it's about compassion. Yes, compassion. I'm not talking about a ooey-gooey feeling pitiful type of thing that people call compassion. I'm talking about the actual force that comes out of your spirit to transform lives and to actually cause miracles or you see miracles happen as a result of it. I want you to join us because you're going to learn some things and how that compassion will cause us to step into the place of forgiveness that we as believers should always be walking in. Why are things so hectic and all chaotic in our world? And the church seems to be involved in it in our day. The reason is we have shut up our hearts of compassion. But God, by his spirit, is opening that up and pulling all the junk out that stops him, compassion himself, from being seen in our lives. Come with me. Let's go into this message. It will bless you tremendously. A heart for this generation. We need your heart, your heart. We need your heart. The heart of the ideal servant. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. I want to speak to you today from this subject, compassion, the trademark of a genius. Compassion, the trademark of a genius. Before you see it, ask a couple of people, where is your compassion? Now, I said a couple people. That means two. So I should have heard it twice coming out of, from the same person's voice. But where is your compassion? I've been, I've been observing a lot of things here lately, or really the last few years, and I'm so amazed at what I'm seeing from so many in the body of Christ. Uh, professing Christians seem to be the hardest, the most hard-hearted and stubborn and angry uh, bitter folks on the planet as though they're not saved. It's as though somebody has passed out some religious tablets and we've, we've uh, uh, you know, saints have taken these religious tablets and used the terminology of Christianity. Now there are people saying that uh, different ones say that they have a certain brand of Christianity. There ain't no brands of Christianity. It's just Christianity. You're either in Christ or you're not. There's one body. There's one Lord. There's one baptism. You can't just show up. Uh, you don't put yourself in the kingdom of God. You have to come through Christ. Well, I'm a good person. That doesn't mean a hill of beans as far as eternity goes because uh, a person's goodness, their own goodness, getting them eternal life and getting them into the kingdom of God makes as much sense or I guess an, ana an analogy would be uh, their goodness is their ability to long jump from that wall uh, to 30 feet. Ooh, that's, that's, that's Olympic stuff there. That's, that's record breaking. But to meet the standards of the kingdom, you have to jump across the Grand Canyon. So if you stretched yourself a little further and hit 35 feet, you're still going to hit rock bottom. It's not enough. No person uh, is good enough. 
And so what is going on is that we're seeing what the Lord spoke about in, in Matthew 24 uh, in many, many ways. The disciples ask him, what will be the sign of the end? And he goes on, he gives this litany of things that, that they're to look at. And one of the things was because of lawlessness, the love of many would harden. It's like as long as wax is near the fire, it goes into a liquid state. In a liquid state, you can take that wax and shape it any way you want. But once you put it in, 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 this, in the form that you, or the, the mold that you want it in, you back it away from the fire and the temperature of the environment that it is now in chills it. And it hardens to that form. Too many of us in the church are wondering why the power of God is not flowing. People are coming into churches with a little devil and all this holy gold that we all got. We can't deal with a little devil. They leave out as they were. So what was the trip for? When our hearts harden, all the attention is on me. And the enemy has craftily assaulted the minds of saints. Some think that uh, God's holding out on them. Some think that, uh, well, you know, I've been in the way for many years, and this joker just showed up. They ain't been around the cup long enough to know what the tea tastes like. And God blessing them. I ain't going to say nothing, but your heart is screaming bloody murder. You're mad at God with your saved self. Say, sanctify and feed with a precious Holy Ghost. And no evil have you done. Really is none since in the last five minutes. <laughs> and so we got a lot of angry people in the body of Christ. And the, the anger and frustration that's lodged in the hearts of adults gets passed on in the house. Now we got angry children. All this stuff is, is, is fueling or helping to fuel a whole lot. Of, are y'all hearing me? Yeah. A whole lot of bad attitudes and, and displays of things that, no, nah, that ain't, that's not God. Christ doesn't act like that. Now we got saints that don't like each other for a whole litany of reasons. One is, you don't look like me. I'm a black Christian. I'm a white Christian. I'm a, I'm a Hispanic Christian. I'm this kind of Christian. What in the world? See, if you go and look at the book of Acts, the church, the called out ones, they look like a whole lot of folks. And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, no compassion. The lack of compassion, you are now set up to have a hard heart. And you know who's the last one to find out? The one with the hard heart. But people around you feel the hardness of your heart through your attitudes and your, your words. They watch how you do things. I love my hum. Here your food is. Slam the plate down and the food come up about six inches off and come back down. It was arranged this way, but when it came back down, it was arranged that way. 
Woman, you know I don't like my chicken laying in no dressing? Well, don't eat it. Then later on, you're trying to play Teddy Pendergrass. Come here, woman. <laughs> now you got a shooting match going on. And you got to go to church in the morning. Yeah. We act as though the world is the light and we're not. So we're expecting change to come from the world. And because we have allowed hardness to set in our am I making sense here? Yeah. We've allowed hardness to set up in our hearts. What has begun to occur is we're looking for the princes, the social leaders, we're looking for some superstar preacher, somebody that's got a hot ministry. We're looking for them to be the ones to deliver us from evil. When the Spirit of God is putting his finger on our individual hearts, where is your compassion? There are some things we want to give some money to, and the Lord said, give yourself to it. We did somebody wrong, and we know we did them wrong, but we won't say, please forgive me. I'm sorry for that. I was wrong. I want to buy you something. I'll buy you something, and that'll take the place of repenting. You ain't fooling nobody but you. And the heart gets harder and harder. And harder. When people are held in bondage by demons all around us, and we don't see them and certainly don't feel them. I remember a day in my life when I lived on the street and nobody knew it. And I went to a church, and they were having service, and they were hucka-bucking and foaming and rolling and running, and they were doing all of that. And nobody knew I had nothing to eat. You need to be saved. I had some words to tell them, but I kept them to myself. No point in acting a fool with what looks like to be the uh, same kind of people. And somebody that did not act spiritual walked up and said, have you had something to eat? In a whole different setting. We're missing it, church. We're missing it. I wondered, why no praise? Hard hearts. Hard, heart, hard hearts don't praise the king. Hard hearts want the praise. So look at this scripture. Verse 36, but when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. We got to find out what's moving us. He was moved. The king himself is moved with compassion because he saw a multitude. But here's what he saw. Because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. And look what he did. Well, there's another, another, another uh, story about him being moved with compassion. Because they were like sheep without shepherd. And the Bible said, and he taught them. In church, we love to be preached to. Stir me. But don't Teach me. Oh, shit. Oh, hey, hey. Oh, uh, that's because we don't want to know. I 
Oh, you need to say that for Sunday school, doc. But you don't even come. And so we have people who are not equipped. The word equipping includes this, this picture, the resetting of a bone that has been broken. If you ever had a bone broken, severe pain. And when they reset it, they don't rub on you. They might distract you and snatch it and shove it back in place. That pain goes up 15 notches. And whatever's in your heart, that's not like God. I promise you, it's going to come to the surface. You might put your hand over and, and two, two letters come out, but it's in there because of the pain. And so the enemy knows if I can inflict enough pain on this individual, I can shut them down because you shut down their heart. When I'm cold and callous and I have this attitude to hell with them, a saint sending people to hell? A saint does not care that a person goes to hell or, or is on their way? Something's wrong with the heart. That is not the heart of Christ. That means the compassion of God, or let me put it this way, God is compassion. So God has not been able to move me. When he used to be able to move me, if it hurt him, I felt it. If it was of interest to him, I felt it. What happened? Ask somebody, so what happened to your compassion? You used to feel people. You used to feel people that look like you, people that don't look like you felt them. What's the point in getting truckloads of revelation and we do nothing with it? We go in our big bag of revelations and we sort through it. No, 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 I like that right there. And we take that out. We're going to do that. Mm -hmm. Yo, oh, yeah, child. Increase. More money. Matter of fact, I'm going to come back to the rest of this later. Just tie the bag off. <laughs> Sit it over here. My, and, and turn it where everybody can see the sign. Bag of revelations. <laughs> and I'm going through this individual bag because I want more money. More money in the hands of somebody who does not have compassion. We see it all over now. You got leaders that don't like people. Don't feel people. Now, I'm not talking about no one person. I'm talking about a whole bunch of people. We got people serving in leadership on all sorts of levels, in all sorts of spheres of influence that do not like people. They're there because of the perks and the benefits of money. Okay, let me show you something. Go to Ezekiel. This is not on my, on my list, but you might as well check it out. Ezekiel 20, no, 22. Ezekiel 22. Oh, Ezekiel 22, and look at verse 23. This is a snapshot of society, not just in America, but period. You're seeing it all over. Verse 23. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, say to her, he's talking to Jerusalem, the city of God. Say to her, you are a land that is not cleansed 
or rained on in the day of indignation. The conspiracy of her prophets in her midst is like a roaring lion tearing the prey. Wait a minute. Prophets got a conspiracy going on. You prophet lie for profit. And the effects of it is like a lion tearing the prey. A lion don't say, hold still, gazelle. I'm about to bite you. Don't kick. No, 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 no. They will eat them while they're still alive. They feel chunks of flesh being ripped out and three-inch canines sinking into them. They don't care about what you feel. I'm hungry. Lions don't eat vegetables. All they eat is meat. Anybody ever been to the zoo and looked at one? They don't be like, hey. They look at you with those funny looking eyes and you already know they sizing you up. Do I use a, do I fold them up like a hot dog or do I round them off like a burger? Do I break them down in steaks? Do I just go for the midsection or just bite him from the head and go all the way down to his toe? First time I saw a lion in the zoo, I started crying. Come on, boy, what's wrong with you? He's going to eat me. That's what I heard him saying. He was licking his chops. I said, I'm going to eat you. I started crying. It was you no know, field trip when we were kids. You know. They had the big bars up, and then they had a space, and then they had another rail. But all I know is that thing was telling me it was going to eat me. And I believed him. So I did the best thing I could do. Cry. <laughs> the conspiracy of her prophets in her midst is like a roaring lion tearing the prey. They have devoured people. The prophets devoured people. Did you know that this salvation, this great salvation that we have through Christ Jesus, him coming, everything was about people? What we've been doing, folks, in the body of Christ is we've been showing uh, preference And favoritism. Uh, Book of James, chapter 2, calls it showing partiality. Somebody's status puts them above a whole group. Somebody's skin color seats them above somebody with another skin color. And the Lord said, if you show partiality, that's sin. He's talking to the body. He wasn't talking to, to the world. He's talking to his people. And the reason for this is that we allow our hearts to get hardened and we try to think through the kingdom. No, we got to get our minds renewed. You can't come with a carnal mindset and try to function in the kingdom. It ain't going to happen. I got a gift. I'm a prophet. Are you devouring people? You know, look like the Lord. Hey, don't, be, don't be lying on him. Just say, the Lord ain't saying this. I'm just prophesying to you. This is the third chapter of Craig. Starting at the sixth verse. Listen, and it's going to go all the way through the 31st verse. And you know from verse 6, in the third chapter of Craig to verse 31, it was a lie. <laughs> but we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. So won't nobody say nothing. Watch this. The prophets got a conspiracy going. They're devouring people. They have taken treasure and precious things. Ah, that's what it's about. Money and wealth. They have made many widows in her midst. We destroyed your husband. 
And in this day, if, if the husband is destroyed, there was no welfare system. Just messed up the whole family. Her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between the holy and the unholy, nor have they made known the difference between the unclean and the clean. Well, praise God, wasn't that great? That's so good, and guess what? That's just the beginning. There is so much more to come. We want you to learn what the Spirit of God has been teaching us about compassion. I'm telling you, compassion will move you to action. It'll move you to doing things because he, compassion himself, lives on the inside of you. Let's stop hating on each other because of the color of our skin, because of our particular level or lack of wealth. Those are no reasons. When we understand kingdom, we start focusing on what's important to the king himself. And I want you to know, he is full of compassion. And so that's the same way we're supposed to be, full of compassion every day, not just Sunday, every day, every day. Listen, let me pray for you before we leave. And I, I want you to uh, understand how much we appreciate you for tuning into this broadcast. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that by the power of the Holy Spirit, every person listening to the sound of my voice, that they will open their hearts of compassion and begin to be sensitive to the Spirit of God, that they will allow you to cause them to be rooted and grounded in love, in your compassion, in the covenant promise, so that they can allow Christ to be seen in their life. Bring peace to their hearts and cause them to make a difference in the lives of others. We receive this, we believe it, in Jesus' name, amen. Listen, thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to join us next time for more of the heart of a servant and allow the king himself to reproduce his heart, the heart of the ideal servant in you. You're a child of God, carry his heart, amen. Thank you for joining us for The Heart of a Servant, an outreach ministry of Canaan Christian Center in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. If you are in the Pine Bluff area, we'd love for you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for our United Prayer on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. and for our midweek service on Wednesday night at 7. We would also like to give a special thank you to all of our covenant partners. If you are interested in becoming a covenant partner, please visit our website or send us an email. We are Canaan Christian Center, praying that you have the heart of the ideal servant.